Now, if you're of a certain age, the line of cars behind me will be very exciting to you. Coming to collecting cars very soon is this selection of very fast Fords. Let's have a poke round, because these really are stunning cars. And remember this, they may not be Ferraris or Porsches or Lamborghinis, but frankly, this is a social history of the UK here in a line of cars. I love that. And also, the cars we aspire to own now are the ones we had pictures of as kids, and also the ones we saw people driving around in that we couldn't afford. Remember that? You'd be driving around in your 1.1 Fiesta, and suddenly someone would turn up in this, the gear. Have a look inside here. 1.3 gear, look at this, 53,000 miles. This is basically your very rich auntie's car. Remember you had an auntie that had a few quid. She could afford the headrest, the fancy interior. We can tell you what the interior is because we've got some of the brochures here. This is just fantastic. The guy that's got these together really knows these onions. So this is, looking here, this is the Chatsworth cloth. And I think we're looking at Pete. We're not looking at Mocha, or are we? No, we're looking at Pete here. I mean, some of the names. You could buy a cloth called Bristol or Bristol Granada. There was a Bristol for the Granada L only. I mean, I don't know whether we can persuade him to let some of these brochures go with it, but it's just fantastic. In fact, there is the Fiesta gear there. That's the exact car I'm sitting in now. Okay, it's not a Ferrari. It's not a Porsche. It hasn't got some fancy twin cam engine, but what it has got is a rev counter. And in an 83 or 82, whenever it was, if you, if you had a rev counter in a car, you were someone. Look at this here. The driver's side window is remote controlled. Not electrically controlled, remote controlled. Passenger side window, stick your hand out into the airflow. Uh, to describe it as mint would be an understatement. All the, all the plastic wood veneer hasn't moved because plastic doesn't shrink, unlike wood. Um, it's got a brown plastic dashboard. I mean, I, I could go on. It's just... It's a joyous, joyous thing, it really is. How many of us took our first trip to school in a Fiesta? Tell you what, my colleague Paddy McGuinness, if he saw this lot, would probably cry. Let's walk down here a bit more. So, what have we got here? That's an XR2, 80, 82 or 83. Uh, again, absolutely mint. For me, that's the, that's the spec you want. The silver with the, with the sort of black lower sides. 70,000 miles, but it's mint. It's absolutely mint. All of this stuff really is eat your dinner off it. Now, the Super Sport. Four spoke wheels. It's interesting. You line a Super Sport up with an XR2. I wonder if this isn't looking more desirable to me because that, that sort of almost tartan interior I mean, just looks fantastic. And so four square, look at the ride heights and everything. Ford understood more than any other car maker how to make aspirational sets of wheels for normal people. You know, if, if you worked, had an ordinary job in the early 80s, you would, you'd find the money if you loved your cars to get it up to that spec. And we've got, we've got the brochure there to tell us how much those lights would have been. This. I'm told it's got the full option pack thrown at it. Um, it's just stunning. By the way, the XR2 is quite rare because it's got no sunroof. Carry on here, XR3i. Now, I think for me, this might be the first fast forward that I really, I suppose, understood. Because by then I was reading car magazines. I understood the fact that basically all the reviews said this wasn't as good as a Golf GTI. It wasn't as good as the Peugeots and the Citroëns. And it used to lose all of the group tests. But it looked right and it was sold by Ford dealers and people trusted them and you could get the parts cheaper. So that's why they sold two of these probably for every one of the others that were sold in the UK. When you win a magazine group test, doesn't mean you're a great car. It means you've won the magazine group test. This is a great car. Because that is, well, look at the front of it. Dempsey and Makepeace, that's what that's all about. Black one. 65,000 miles, absolutely mint again. Oh, it's just stunning. Would you like your red or the black? I'm going to take the black. Stealthy for me. Those wheels are a great design as well. Now, we're getting slightly towards royalty here. RS1600i. Um, 
several mods over an XR3i, obviously you've got motorsport engine bits, but look at the seat. Look at the RS seat. Look at this. I'm gonna have to sit in that seat. Just feel it hug me. Okay, that's a better seat than just about any modern seat I've sat in that belongs to a performance car now. Also, four spoke RS steering wheel. I just feel, I'm feeling stonewashed jeans. I'm feeling white toweling socks, some sort of Barrett shoes that were pointy with laces down the side. Lots of hair product, don't laugh. Um, and maybe some sort of Tubbs and Crockett style jacket with a lot of shoulder on it and a vinyl finish that if you lit a fag near it, it would probably blow up in your face. That seat is, wow. Okay, I mean, these are valuable cars now, aren't they? These used to be, 20 years ago, you were looking at nine, 10 grand. It's probably a 40,000 pound car now. But if it's your dream, if you wanted one then, and you've got the money now, speaking of which, I think, of everything on display here, this is the one for me. RS Turbo, the Gen 1, which always looks miles better than the Gen 2 to me. These were fast. They were a bit wobbly and torque steering, I know that. Have a look at this, by the way. Right, the old familiar bonnet latch. Someone used to call that the tongue to me, because it was that sort of tongue-shaped colour that was underneath the dashboard. Right. Now, some cars are described as mint. Well, there's mint, and then there's that. Okay, apparently this is a really famous car because it won, it won the best in show Ford Concourse, whatever you call it, 11 times apparently. This is a proper award-winning car with provenance in that area. I'm not a polisher myself, but I can see the benefits of it when you look at the condition of this car. It is stunning. And again, I'm told it's the best one out there. Have a look in the back here. I love that. Original sticker from Aberdeen. Large figure number plate, that matters to me as well. And then, I mean, she's a winner. Look at this, she's got cups. He, she, I don't know, it, it's got cups. Wonderbar, look at this, Capri 2.8 injection. That was the one. How many of those came to grief on roundabouts with a touch of diesel and people couldn't drive them properly? People, people say a three litre S is superior, but I think if you're my generation, just with the updated looks and those wheels, this is a Brooklands. So again, full leather upholstery. This is, this is probably a bit more valuable than that one. Capris, well, they just look cool, don't they? All of this, I look at this and I think the social history of Ford and what it's meant to this country, that's why they're becoming valuable because Ford sadly has become, well, it's no longer a, a maker of small cars as of next year. It's making electric things and they're very expensive. These were cars, excluding this stuff, that everyone could afford. This one, not many people could afford and no one could afford to insure it. Again, this one's special about its particular car. It's a, it's a normal one, it's not a 500. Uh, Moonstone, obviously, we'll have a look at the mileage in a minute. There was a Vanguard's model made of the Cosworth and this was the car it was based on. One of those claims that I would never have one of my own cars because I'm not that nerdy, but that will matter to some people. Here we go, look inside. It's saying 15,000 miles. I mean, it's, it's, you could eat your dinner off it. It is absolutely, completely and utterly mint. So what we will do is choose a couple of these to go for a wobble down the road in a second, just to maybe rekindle some memories. I never owned any fast fours during this era, but I have to say, looking at them now, you understand how successful they were. They just worked out what people wanted. It was cars that looked like this. Uh, right now, here we go. Also coming in this collection are a couple of fantastic little caterings. These have got the three cylinder engine in them. So I'm told that one's about 85 horsepower. This one's got 105, 110 horsepower. I think they look fantastic. Come on now. Facelift CTI, it's got the later clear indicators. This is 9,000 miles. I get quite tweaked about a CTI. I think these were so cool. Imagine if you've just bought your dream house in Spain, Portugal, south of France. Just leave this down there. Perfect. And here we go. Right-hand drive, G60, in red, 
BBSs and 42,000 miles. Um, you'd buy it for the interior alone. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. So it's a random collection of brilliant examples of quite ordinary cars in many ways. That might be what it's all about these days, mightn't it? Do you need to have a 500,000 pound Ferrari? You might have more fun in one of these because you might actually use it. So I'm in the little XR2, the silver one that you saw. I'm gonna wind my window up. I'll tell you what, from the moment you get in this thing, you're just reminded of how much more fun cars were. It's such an easy, lazy cliche to drop into, but there's a simplicity here that's really, really beguiling. I've got four gear ratios, but the gear shift is super precise and it just, it feels like you're managing the cogs within the gearbox, steering unassisted, super direct, and just the steering wheel's wriggling around in my hand. Driving position's a bit weird, but I've got these bolstered seats, so I feel like I'm in something sporty. And most importantly, I've got a line of red plastic around my dashboard that includes not only a rev counter, but a speedometer that goes to 140 miles an hour, which this vehicle wouldn't have a hope in hell of achieving. But who cares? Pedals all right? No, I can even do a little heel and toe then. Like an 80s racing driver. How did she go? Tell you what, it's perfectly fast enough. This is wicked. Absolutely frigging fantastic motor car. Look at it from the outside. It's just, yeah. Makes you question why you buy a classic car or a significant car or a collector car, whatever you want to call it. If it's about how that car makes you feel, what part of your life it refers back to, the reasons why you hankered after that vehicle and then how you feel about driving it in the present day these fords are right up there there's a simplicity here that's as i've said gorgeous but it's fun to drive you could you could see yourself nipping down to the shops in this when the weather's good you can see yourself going to the pub in it i go on road trips in it it's magnificent proper grunty as well it goes really well rides well just looks fantastic to my eyes I know this is a sales tool for, a, for an auction, but don't get me wrong. There's, there's space in my shed for one of these. Just fantastic little car. Enjoy. It's such a hot day, I've got to have the window down. Sorry about that, so you're going to get some wind rustle. And also, I'd normally remove any kind of detritus in the car, but when you've got an RS Owners Club air freshener, you leave it in. So, Mark 1 RS Turbo, and this is, I'm told, royalty on the RS owner's circuit because it keeps winning concourse events. These cars are just right. This Recaro seat is gripping my ample frame at the moment. The dashboard is simple, a little bit sporty. Wish there's a boost gauge. Gear shift is really nice and tight. By conventional standards, does it feel fast? No, not really, but it goes damn well. And it just, again, it's a car of its time. But that time, I think, might have been peak motoring. When we all stopped driving cars, I wonder whether we might look back on the mid-80s as, as the time when you had the best balance of open roads, no speed cameras, but cars that were technically very competent. It's just flipping joyous. It really is. Let's go down a windier road. boost builds it's not a massive surge early on it actually builds a bit later than i thought that's interesting so if you're, it really starts to get it really starts to get going beyond about four then it's fast it's much much quicker than the fiesta obviously we've got 130 horsepower haven't we um and it's the ride's firm it's shaking me around this is i think this was the dream car for most for most people of my generation at this point. I, I was a bit too young, but when I was 17 and these were two or three years old, this is what I wanted. And I think from the outside, it just looks sensational. 
it's low it's got that rs wheel it's got the it's got the wider arches on it you would just feel the dog's bollocks in this you'd think anything was possible you'd think you could pull any woman and that you could out drag and out sprint anything it just so happens that a one litre golf would smoke this baby now but it makes no difference because you don't look cool in a one litre golf and i know right now that i'm the coolest looking person in surrey that is saying something steering's quick I actually feel the shell moving around a bit because these old things do i mean down here you can see the carpet is brand new not sure we should really be driving it. It's almost too nice. I felt so nervous when I got in it compared to driving 20 million pound Ferraris and things. I'm not sure we'll be driving this. It's too nice. What a thing. Bit of me would hope someone would buy it and use it like a new car. Oh. I feel a bit wistful and old. Simpler times than all that. Simpler times. The Escort RS Turbo, the name as well, Escort RS Turbo, just the name alone was enough to make you go, oh yeah, they were the bollocks they were.